Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik, the great is silent, and today we're talking about Marcello Dell'Utri, longtime friend of Berlusconi, senator, convicted criminal and alleged mafia-tied businessman. Dell'Utri is one of the sketchiest politicians in the Second Republic, a true gold mine of conspiracy and controversy that has traveled through the institutions and represents a dangerous president in Italian history. His political career is a testament of all the wrong things and shameless episodes in Berlusconi's Italy, a time period that technically went from 2001 to 2011, but in actuality went even further back and can still be seen today. I will elaborate after the intro, but before I let it play, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I also want to remind you of the existence of my Discord channel and my subscribe star. Joining them are both really nice ways of helping me, especially the latter. On the Discord we also have a vibrant and diverse community where we hang out sometimes and talk about history and politics. Without further ado, let's play the intro. Marcello Dell'Utri was born in 1941 in Palermo, Sicily. He studied law in Milan, where he met Silvio Berlusconi, for whom he will later work as a secretary. Throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s, they'd partner up on and off, either on football or real estate markets. Their history of controversies began in 1974, when Berlusconi bought a beautiful villa in Arcore, also called San Martin Villa, out of an impoverished novel called Anna Maria Casati Stampa, who was supposedly scammed into the transaction by the Lutri and her lawyer at the time, Cesare Previti. Previti will eventually become Berlusconi's lawyer himself, and the three have, have quite a history. The Lutri will prove to have deep ties with the Mafia from very early on. He probably earned these friendships by working in a few Sicilian central saving banks in the early 60s, but that could be a stretch, so don't quote me on that. The first red flag was when the Lutri brought to Berlusconi's mansion a certain Vittorio Mangano, who despite being a documented mafioso, was hired by Berlusconi as the housekeeper of the immense villa, where he moved alongside his family. It was supposedly a deal of mutual protection. Berlusconi was protected by the mob and Mangano by the police, although it is not 100% certain if Berlusconi knew Mangano's background before hiring him. Tellutri certainly knew, since he often went to family parties with him. Mangano will try to kidnap Berlusconi's five-year-old after he fired him in 1976, supposedly after finding out he was a member of the Mafia, although that is not official. This won't be enough to break the bond of friendship Tellutri had with Berlusconi. In fact, when he decided to enter the world of private television by funding Finivest, Tellutri became became a president of Publitalia 80, the company which dealt with the commercials going on Mediaset's TV channels. Finivest SPA is an Italian holding company controlled by the Berlusconi family, which includes companies operating in transportation, insurance and most importantly, media entertainment. Between the 80s and 90s, Berlusconi, with the help of the Lutri, built a full-scale media empire, which provided Italians with free entertainment entertainment, although with a shit ton of commercials. By 1994, Berlusconi was one of the most powerful, influential and respected people in Italy, and the Lutri, as his closest collaborator behind the scenes, carried out many white-collar crimes such as fraud, corruption, money laundering and tax evasion in the name of Finivest. The Lutri kept doing this after the birth of Berlusconi's political party, Forza Italia, which grew into being a determining force in Italy throughout the 90s and the 2000s. 
1996, the Lutri will be accused of fraud and mafia-related crimes by the Palermo Court of Justice. Due to the gravity of such accusations, Berlusconi recommended them to run for parliament at the soon-to-come elections. In fact, at the time, being part of the Chamber of Deputies and Senate granted a high level of immunity from the justice system. This immunity still exists, although it is not as powerful as it used to be. In Italy, the relations between politics and the justice system are uniquely polarized, and there have been many instances where justice was weaponized by certain parties. These laws were implemented to create a division between the two organs. However, these same measures also allowed the Lutri to escape judgment for decades. The only way one member of parliament can be prosecuted by a court of justice is if the parliament makes a vote to allow it, and that happened in 1999. The vote passed because the left had the majority of the seats, but the Lutri still managed to negotiate his way out of a two-year-long conviction for fraud and tax evasion. After a brief time in the European Parliament, the Lutri will be made senator in 2001, which at the time could be voted only with closed lists. That meant that you did not know who the party you were voting for was actually going to send to the Senate. The Lutri was just like a very ugly toy coming out of a Kinder Egg, which however you still kept for some reason for over 10 years in your locker. He will stay in the Senate for 12 years, during which he never presented a bill. In 2010, during an interview with journalist Beatrice Borromeo, he made a bunch of declarations which are quite revealing of the quality of his character. I will show you one and actually no, yes sure, the first one will be from the interview, but I'm also going to read a bunch of other quotes from all over the place. I will put the source at the bottom. <clears throat> Prescriptions, amnesties, laws at personam, they're shameful for the guilty, the innocent of mind. There is no mafia. The mafia is a way of being, of thinking. It is a culture that is not mine. I am a politician in self-defense. I don't care about politics. I defend myself with politics. I am forced to. Likewise, I ran in 1996 to defend myself. In fact, I received the arrest warrant right after. I also defend myself outside the parliament, but I'm not an idiot. If I leave, they will arrest me. Mussolini was by no means a ruthless and bloody dictator like Stalin could be. Reading his diaries day by day from 35 to 39, I can assure you that I find Mussolini an extraordinary man of great culture. <clears throat> Sorry for the voice crack. It's important to keep in mind, though, that the supposed Mussolini diaries actually don't exist. They were found by the Lutri in 2007, but in 2011, you know, they did some tests and it turned out they were fake. So, yeah. The Lutri's run from the law could not last forever and had to end eventually. That moment came in January 2013, when the Attorney General of Palermo demanded the Senator to be sent to jail for seven years over his charges of association with criminal organizations. This coincided with the Lutri's intention to retire from politics, something that didn't exactly appear as a good recipe for freedom for most observers. Berlusconi at first tried to convince him to run again in the hopes of saving him, but the charges were so serious that parliamentary immunity was not going to cut it regardless, and so the Lutri packed up and went to Lebanon. I'm serious. The Lutri made himself unreachable by the authorities starting from the second half of March 2014, on the basis of what was declared by the Anti-Mafia Investigation Department in Palermo, which intended to put the now former senator in precautionary custody while while he awaited the appeal to his order and the trial. The Lutri was officially declared a fugitive and a warrant was called worldwide for his retrieval. Eventually the man was found in Lebanon through a bunch of telephone records. The Lebanese authorities found them in a hotel in Beirut and arrested them in April 2014. The Lutri was sent to prison in Parma and moved to Rebibia shortly after. Apparently to pass the time, he signed up to the 
University of Bologna and began studying history. I'm not sure if he eventually graduated, but I can't find much about it. Despite his sentence being seven years old, he left prison in, in 2018 due to health reasons. There are still many ongoing trials involving charges of money laundering, tax evasion, collusion, association with the mafia and much more, but since the Lutri is nearing his 80s, most of these cases will probably remain unsolved before, you know, his passing. Although given his track record, he probably won't be remembered as a sweetheart. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Recently, despite the controversies, the Lutri has reappeared in the public sphere due to his recent involvement in the Sicilian regional elections. Apparently, he is kind of an advisor for Forza Italia. Quite a unique choice indeed. I mean, jokes aside, there is probably not anyone more familiar with Sicily on a, on a political level than the Lutri, but his background raises some questions. Sicily is an autonomous region in Italy, where the president and legislative council hold a bigger role than the one of other regions. There are other regions with more autonomy, such as Sardinia, Trentino and Aosta, but Sicily tends to hold a bigger weight on the national balance. The current president is Nello Musumeci, who has been there since 2017. Aside of the fact that he wants more autonomy for Sicilians and that he is a Eurosceptic, anti-immigration and generally conservative, I don't know much about the guy. I'd be open to make a video on the political situation in Sicily if it's something you'd be interested in and if this video gets 25 likes. Sicily will be voting for their new president soon in autumn, so the video will probably be out in the late summer or something. That being said, thank you all for watching, be sure to subscribe if you like my stuff and consider joining the Discord and checking out the merch and subscribe star. I will see you next week with a brand new video.